him. We're marching to Zion. And we're marching. Come on. To Zion. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. beautiful Zion. Zion. And we're marching upward to Zion. Yes, there is a beautiful city. Stand on your feet and sing it again. We're marching. Come on. To Zion. gentlemen it's me Jermaine and I'm back I'm back from my journey to Israel I spent a couple of weeks uh, in totality of 15 days um, in Israel and I spent some of those days about five of them in Cairo Egypt so I had an amazing journey um, and I'm definitely want to share my experience in Israel with you all, uh, especially Jerusalem, Jerusalem known as the holy city. But the message today is one that is a mixed message. It is not all joy and it is certainly not all sorrow. Um, but like Christ himself, I too weep over Jerusalem. I want you to take notice of this uh, sleeve that I have here. I brought this back. It represents that of the Jerusalem cross. The Jerusalem cross, um, you can, you know it by the uh, main cross, obviously, that's in the center and the four crosses uh, that are in each, there are a cross in each corner, uh, bringing a totality of five, including the one in the center, four in each respective corner of the main cross. So I'm delighted to bring this back. This means so much to me. And I will always cherish this because it does represent the cross of Jerusalem. I want to talk about Jerusalem for a moment, and I have today again prepared uh, remarks about my experience because there's so much depth to this experience that I need to be thorough and detailed as much as I can possibly. But before we get started, let us look to the word of the Lord. There is a message today coming out of the gospel according to Luke. And it reads at chapter 19, verse 41, and this is where we will commence. It reads as so, as he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, if you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground and you and your children within you. They will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. This passage that I have read unto you is entitled Jesus Yeshua weeps over Jerusalem. I would like to commence this message on today. Jermaine too weeps 
over Jerusalem. I had such a wonderful time in Jerusalem. Every time I would approach the city via Jerusalem, I was moved to tears. Much like Yeshua was in our text today when he approached the city. These tears were full of mixed emotions. There was joy and sorrow. Joy because I'm glad that I have the ability, the opportunity um, to be there witnessing where Jesus prayed, where he was sentenced, where he was crucified, resurrected, and ascended. Wow. Just ponder on that for a moment. Take that all in. That is heavy. To be in the place where the gospel occurred and was recorded is phenomenal. Not to mention other places like Jericho and Nazareth, his hometown, Capernaum, where he ministered, and Bethlehem, the place of his birth. If someone were to ask me, what does it feel like? What did that feel like? Witnessing the very steps of Yeshua, our Christ, I would have to say it was a state of shock and a state of awe. Many times, even as I went to these various locations, I couldn't have a moment to sit there because many people asked me, Jermaine, were you, were you um, emotional when you went to the place of his birth or uh, Capernaum where he ministered to Jericho? Or... The emotions didn't come into, until after the the visit after I had time to sit and reflect upon where it is that I went, the places that I went, it was then recognizing that I have went to these places because when you go to these places, there are many tourists and there are many people and you have to move fast. You don't really have time for a moment because there are too many people. Everybody is trying to see this place where Jesus literally um, was birth. So it's a state of shock and it's a state of awe. It's majestic, yes. However, I want you to understand that Jerusalem is much of the same place, sad to say, that it was in the day when Jesus, was, when Jesus, Yeshua, walked it. It is a majority a Jewish city within a Jewish nation. I walked along proudly the streets of Jerusalem and Israel with my cross while seeing many who wore their representations of their Judaism, like with black suits and huge top hats or the little circle hats that they place on the top of their head. These would be known as Orthodox Jews. You would think that after all that Yeshua encountered, after all that Yeshua had been through, after the torture, after the ridicule, after the crucifixion, after being bludgeoned and flogged and crushed and beaten, that Israel would be a majority Christian nation, or they would be Messianic Jews. Messianic Jews are those who believe and profess Yeshua to be the Messiah. But that is not the case on today. Don't get me wrong. Yeshua was a Jew, but he was a Jew that was God in the flesh. He was a Jew that was the Messiah to bring salvation to his own people. A Jew who was the very essence of the word of fulfillment of God mentioned by Moses, foretold by several prophets such as Isaiah. So this is where the sadness begins to pour in for me. Like Christ, sad to the fact that Yeshua was sent to his own people and his own people rejected him. Could you imagine coming back to the place where you call home and only to be rejected like Yeshua too? 
It is a time of weeping. You would weep. Even now at the thought of my God, the son of the very living God being rejected by his own in the city of Jerusalem saddens me. And the fact that he is rejected even today saddens me. But it also angers me. Yeshua, the very essence, the very son of the living God, rejected amongst his own. God made him, our scripture says in first, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I don't want us to miss the fact that not only Yeshua was sad about this, but he was angered. You've read our verse in this message in verse 43, he says, where he gives a prophetic declaration against Israel, against Jerusalem. He says, indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground and your children with you, and they will not leave within you one stone upon another because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. Israel's rejection of Christ, God in the flesh, is a rejection of the covenant that he made with them. The fall of Israel is represented as God's judgment. So make no mistake, there will never be peace in Israel because God has deemed it as so according to his word that we have read here i remember engaging in a discussion about uh, whether or not uh, god as a, a relative made the statement that we all have the same god and we christians and jews all believe in the same god that is a myth and that in itself is not accurate. I made a sharp correction to that statement. Those in Christ have God because we have received and believed on him that he is the son of God. And the word says, I am the way. This is John 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the father except by me. If you had known me, then you would have also known my father. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, do not be misled by this universalism. God is not with the Jews. The Jews do not have God. According to the scripture, I don't know why or how this universalism was made because it explicitly says in our scriptures that they don't know God. Read that John 14 chapter and you will clearly understand. Read between the encounters that he has between uh, the Pharisees. Read the gospel in its entirety. God is not with the Jews. God is with those who believe on his son and therefore have a relationship with God as a result of his son. If you are in Christ and you believe in his son, then you have God. Unfortunately, for the Jews who don't believe on the, on the Son, their sin remains unforgiven. Now, that in itself is sad. But you must read your gospel to understand that. In summation, I have walked away from Jerusalem, having seen the lack of peace that surrounds it with other nations. Much to the extent as Jesus said it would be, 
but also from the current heinous and malicious policies that Israel has set against the Palestinians claiming territory where it is not Israel territory. Today, Israel still violates its peace treaty with the Palestinians over its borders, stealing territory from Palestinians for the production of its own dwelling places. Additionally, the Palestinians, as I have witnessed, are harassed at various checkpoints throughout Israel, being treated not only as second class citizens, but as threats. Does anyone think that there can possibly be peace? Apart from what Jesus, damnation in Israel with this kind of heinous policies, injustice going on, there will never be any peace. So I left Israel knowing that there is much work to be done. Is it too late for Israel to turn back? to turn to the Lord, to turn to God and keep covenant by accepting the Son of God, by accepting the Messiah. No, it's not. Some would argue that I'm anti-Israel, but don't deem me as anti-Israel. I'm not anti-anything. But what I am, deem me as Jermaine, like Yeshua, weeps over Jerusalem. Deem me as a man who so desperately wants to advance and make known that Yeshua is not only king of the Jews as he was crucified with those words above uh, his head, but he is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. He is God in the flesh. Deem me as Christ's messenger to the world. I've come away knowing that there is much that still needs to be done. The gospel message must not only be preached to the ends of the earth, but must be preached in all of Jerusalem and all of Israel. So therefore, Israel, I will be back. Israel, Jerusalem, I come in the name of the Lord. God bless you. I'll see you next week.